This is really about being free to create what you want your life to look like. We each are our own hero. And how do we take the challenges that come our way and see those as the birth process of us becoming heroic? Can you meet that judgment that ultimately will surface with neutrality? This is the Wall Street Coach Podcast with Kim Ann Curtin. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here to watch this podcast interview with John Gray today. I wanted to just remind you to please go and get a copy of one of my free ebooks uh, called Discipline and Finding Your Edge, and it's on the website traderdiscipline.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome back, everybody, to the Wall Street Coach Podcast. Uh, I am so excited today to have our guest, John Gray. Uh, many of you know that I worked for uh, 10 years in total between Barnes and Oakland and Borders, and John Gray's book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, uh, was the most unbelievable bestseller our bookstores had ever, ever seen before. We couldn't keep that book in stock and men and women were both buying it in droves. They were buying multiple copies at a time because they wanted to give it to everybody they knew. And so, John, welcome to this podcast of mine. I'm so happy to have you here today. <laughs> Kim, it's a walk down the past. It's certainly a pleasure to hear that story. I remember the rush, you know, what was it? Six years, number one on the New York Six Times years. list. You know, it was crazy. And this is before Oprah to all the youngins here who think, oh, <laughs> Oprah makes books, bestsellers. No, no, no. No Oprah was involved. This was yeah. John Gray's well, wisdom all by itself. With my other book, How to Get What You Want, Oprah helped to promote that book. Did she? Okay. It was a bestseller. But Men Are From Mars, I, I did go on the Oprah show many times, even with Men Are From Mars. But I was, you know, they rejected me over and over. I wanted to be on that show. Every author did. And, <laughs> and finally, I just wrote a letter to Oprah. I said, look, I've been rejected again and again and again a number one best-selling author in the world for one year, and I'm still not invited on the show. And then I remember picking up my daughter to school one day, my little daughter in kindergarten at that time. She's grown up now. It's a long time ago. And I'm about to leave, and Oprah calls me. <laughs> yeah, I just pick up the phone. John, it is Oprah. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. She said, I read your book. I want to put it out there. And, you know, even, even that show had a – you know, at one point we're reading the book together and she's talking to me and she was lovely. And then she said, now I want everybody to know I'm always promoting books, but if there's only one book that you ever buy because of my suggestion, this is the one, this is the one. Wow. And that was such a great endorsement. They took it out because oh. they thought it was a conflict of interest. They literally took it out. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. The book continued, continued. Oh, but you know she said it. And now yeah, we know all she know said that yeah, she said yeah. it. And I'm not surprised because it's a profound book. And speaking of profound books, your most recent book, uh, Beyond Mars and Venus, Relationship Skills for Today's Complex World, Take a Relationship to the Next Level. This is extraordinary as well, John. I I'm so enamored with it. I can't tell you. The, the whole book now is just one big highlight, basically, because I have highlighted so many parts. We have you, you know, here, and I, and I just want to say to our audience, if you don't know who John Gray is, you know, I'm glad if this is the opportunity you're getting to get introduced to him because you do need to know who he is for your own health, never mind your personal relationships, but your relationship to yourself, your body, and you know, your testosterone and your neurotransmitters, all of this you have to know about. You know, we have uh, executives and traders who watch our podcast and they put so much into their work that I feel they don't always pay attention to things that they're not that uh, exposed to. And that's what I hope we can do today. But let me give you John's bio so you all have some context for those of you who might be younger and are just getting introduced to John uh, in this conversation. Uh, again, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus is the book that he first wrote. He is the most well-known trust relationship 
book of all time, him and this book. It was the number one. I am that book. (laughs) (laughs) I've become that book. Are you the guy that wrote that book? (laughs) I bet bet that's what they say. How can they? All the time. All the time. How can they not? Um, For a lot of the guys, it's usually in the airports where I see all these people. And the the wives will say, he wrote that book. I think that's him. So guys, they don't mind invading your space, particularly if they know they're going to compliment you. Right. And he comes up and he says, are you really, are you the guy that wrote that book? And what's so funny is what they mean is the only book I've read in the, since I got out of school. <laughs> that book. That book. <laughs> adorable. That is adorable. I could totally see that. Um, you know, this book was, has been translated into five, 45 languages uh, in a, over 100 countries, continues to be a bestseller. Uh, of course, Dr. Gray's written over 20 books, but this particular one, Beyond Mars and Venus, is the one that I would say you want to start with. And yeah. it's just forever changed men and women's relationships with each other and with understanding themselves. Um, you know, his knowledge is just robust. And part of the reason, John, I wanted you here was that I really wanted you to speak about uh, what right now those who are managing either their own trading accounts or their own monies are going through. We have this uh, volatile market for a number of weeks now. And our date today, just for context, guys, is March 10th, 2022. Uh, you know, if you're talking to a primarily male young demographic here who who are traders and or those who are trying to navigate this craziness a lot of what you talk about in this new book is about the importance of keeping your testosterone levels uh at a certain uh degree and if those go down the kaleidoscope of challenges that come with it intellectually and emotionally so yeah feel free to maybe start there if you would. Oh, happy to. Well, I need a little context for what we're going to jump into here. And in the intro, you said we're going to learn as coaches, both of you do uh, most uh, emotional intelligence, which is really intelligent stress reduction in your life, how you manage stress effectively. And also, although John's an expert on relationships, we're not not going to go there. Okay, we cannot go there, but just people to know. <laughs> Well, we Is probably that, will go there because okay, okay. most of Cause, the cause young part of men. managing part of managing yeah. stress is also yeah. managing your relationships. Yes, for okay? sure. So this is really for key. Sure. And if you don't have a relationship and you're a man, that can also be a source of stress for you. And if you're a trader, now I, I mentioned to you before, is that you know I'm 70 years old, and I think when I turned 68 or something like that, I could get into my 401k and all that money's just sitting there. And I, and suddenly it's like, Hey, I could probably do this. And I did it for one year and I stopped. Okay. I don't, I don't need money that much. (laughs) And and every morning I woke up, looked at the stock market. I'm sitting there watching it. I'm buying, I'm selling, I'm doing this and that. And, and maybe I'm just not cut out for it, but I thought I was pretty good at it, but it was causing too much stress in my life for me. I don't have to. And (laughs) basically It's being in a state of adrenaline consistently. That's exciting. I loved it. I loved it. Then I realized, oh, this is chronic adrenaline going on. And even in my relationships, not being able to stay present with my partner. Now, I just, I'm going to be talking about relationships as well. And I, I refer to a lot of stories from my marriage and I'll use it in the past tense because my wife, Bonnie, has passed. So three years ago, she passed. So uh, so I just want you to understand why, <laughs> you know, when I talk about the past, people often think I'm divorced. Actually, we had an amazing relationship for 32, 33 years. Yes. And uh, I learned so much. I grew so much. I was devastated when, when she passed cancer. It was a hard journey for us. We just got closer. And, and uh, I went to about two years of grieving. And now I'm in a spectacular relationship because everything I teach works. <laughs> so, I just, so, so lucky to have this knowledge. And I was just counseling a couple today and she is it really possible? I said, absolutely. Everything you two do is wrong. Once you learn the baby steps of how to correctly have a relationship with the opposite sex, it's a, it's a journey up the mountain instead of down the mountain. Yes. Cause usually when you have that experience of hopelessness, in a relationship because you're doing your best. And I'll talk to, even though I'm talking to mostly guys here, yeah. the women always think they're doing the best and they're always wearing the white hat and you're yeah. wearing the black hat. That's just the reality. Okay. And 
part of what, if I was talking to women, I explained to women in a loving way that you're wearing the black hat. He's wearing the black hat, but you're wearing the black hat, which means you're both making mistakes. Yes. And um, unfortunately for women, they often, they feel, oh, I'm just not getting enough. I'm not getting enough. I'm not getting enough. That's why a lot of guys just don't have anything to do with relationships because, you know, I, I just do this for a living 50 years, right? And almost every woman says the same thing if you summarize it. I give and I give and I don't give back. And every man who wants a divorce says the same thing as, as men, not women. Men say, you know, no matter what I do, it's never enough for her. It's just not enough. I just feel drained when I'm around her. I need somebody to be happy. Yes. So I start to explain to them, well, what do you do that makes her happy? <laughs> And they do everything wrong. Okay, so <laughs> and they don't know better. And what's yep. so interesting is they're most open to these ideas right now. Men are from Mars sells way more to men than to women. Wow, it's a, <laughs> such an interesting because men are very. It's like you know, women say, "Oh, men don't want to read relationship books." I say, "Yes, they do. Yes, they do." Go to the Barnes and Noble. Look at where the books men buy, and the, the books about how to make money. Because men know if you don't make money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get laid. So it's as simple as that. You know, they make money and, and they think that's enough. Well, we got a great example of Bezos being divorced. We got a great example of Bill Gates being divorced. Money is not enough. And usually it sabotages unless you have my insights. The insights are there to make sure these relationships work. Now, having said all that, yes. I know what you asked me in the beginning is I just can't, that's like a, a very important aspect. It's an important aspect of this book we're, we're talking about as well as beyond Mars and Venus. And what I found is, see, it's an upgrade from the classic book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. That really helped people who are were, who were more, more traditional relationship. You know, women often cook dinner, you know? Wow. <laughs> and, and he felt the primary responsibility for making money. That's more traditional. Yes. But today, many women are making more money than men or they have the potential to make more money than men. And they're thinking if I could make more money than men. So it's everything is switched around. Yes. And so I wrote this book and it's extremely relevant today because why are women so unhappy today? It's a lack of emotional intelligence. And for men, our stress levels go up if we're living with or in a relationship with a stressed woman. I just Listen, the whole, you know, if you, you look at ancient days, the whole purpose of marriage, besides keeping the family together, which is really important, you raise children with two happy parents. But the idea was men would do dirty, difficult, and dangerous. Mm -hmm. We would go out to the jungle, we fight the battles, we've got to we have the scars, you know, and we come home, we don't complain at all. And we come home to be comforted by the woman. See, comfort was her love. She's a pillow, you know, these soft breasts, you know, making love. It, all this stuff was he's gonna do all that and she's gonna have an easier life. And what I point out in this book is that the way we're designed as human beings is that when a woman feels happy, not pressured, not like I have to do something to survive. I've got a man, I have to love him and then I'll survive. But see, that's not the case today. Yes. As soon as women were free to be independent, not depending on men. I mean, you can get a job, you'd be educated. We take these things for granted today, but it's a huge cultural shift. And that's good. I think that's a great thing because, you know, in 1969, divorce rates in America went from 10% uh, to 50% in one year. Now, that was one simple death uh, thing, and the government said it's okay to have no fault divorce. Wow. See, prior to that time, if you wanted a divorce, you had to go for, for a judge. <laughs> And, and tell all your problems and he's going to tell you to go home and work it out. But you've just aired all your dirty laundry in front of the whole public and nobody wanted to do that. So you'd stay and you really didn't have the economic support if you're a woman to leave. So in that situation, bad things would happen, particularly as, as we're sort of outliving those old traditional roles. See, I'm a very progressive person from one point of view. I'm not woke, okay? <laughs> I just don't know where I'm coming from. If you're woke, <laughs> you're offended by everything I say, all right? <laughs> so to trade, you're a warrior, okay? You're a warrior and you're living in adrenaline. And the problem with that is that adrenaline, it's a good thing about it, adrenaline makes you feel alive. You know, when I drive my Bentley 120 miles an hour, it's like taking drugs. Okay, so <laughs> it's, that's adrenaline. That means I'm still in control, but I'm in danger. Mm -hmm. The best place to look at that. And so when you're, when you're trading, you, you've got the knowledge, you think you're in control, yeah. 
Yes. Otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Okay. Right. It's like you go fast. You think, okay, I'm going to be okay. I'm gonna, one part of you is saying I'm okay. Another part of you that there's danger. Yes. And of course, right now the danger is greater than ever. We, we don't know whether we're, you know, from one point of view as a, a novice trader, I don't imply to be any expert at all. I tell you, <laughs> I'm not an expert at all, but as a novice trader, you've got one simple logic. Well, if, if there's not going to be this crazy inflation, yeah. then people will have, uh, you know, basically everything's more expensive. Salaries will go up and then to compensate for that. And then more people will trade. Okay. So stocks should go up and yet historically stocks don't go up during a place. So there's a, nothing's happened like what's happening now. And right. please don't listen to anything I say about trading. I'm the expert <laughs> on relationships. So if I just sound like an idiot when it comes to trading, I surrender. Okay. So I found a good trader that I saw his track record. He's handling it for me. And that's how I'm doing it now. I, I do it mainly not because I don't have confidence that I could do it well, although I'm not an expert by, ch by any chance. It's the amount of adrenaline that was being produced in my body. You see, I'll tell you what happened to me. You imagine, you know, Kim, you talked about the superstar mm -hmm. book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Okay. I was everywhere on every TV show, did it, <laughs> travel, thousands of audience. I did my own Broadway show, most successful Broadway show in history. I sold out seven shows, wow. um, at the biggest theater in Broadway, the Gershwin Theater, eight shows. Uh, and the reason I say it's most successful, is what they said, is because I made the most money because I had no props. I had no stuff. Right. <laughs> the reviewers hated me. They said, he didn't even do a background. He didn't do it. <laughs> I just came out on stage and talked a bit like a comedian, but with no props in the Why? biggest theater. But you know, not that other people haven't done that now, but yeah, the, the, the point, the point being, I had so much energy, you know, I was in all the magazines, the Forbes, the time, the new weeks of this, the New York times, everything just ongoing. That was happy time, but adrenaline. Yes. And the uh, consequence of that for me was Parkinson's. Wow. Now, so I had Parkinson's in the year 2000, wow. right? So basically what that does, high, high adrenaline, it stimulates dopamine. So when you've got adrenaline, you've got high dopamine and then dopamine starts converting into adrenaline. So it's even bigger high than dopamine. Dopamine mm -hmm. is like what I'm producing right now. I'm excited. I'm good at what I do. I make a difference. People will appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I'm good at what I do. Anytime you're good at what you do and you feel successful, when you feel confident, your body makes testosterone. And when you have dopamine, your body makes more testosterone. Mm -hmm. Now your average male today in America at any age, every year is testosterone is going down 1%, 1%, 1%. So you have the, the 20 year olds compare their testosterone levels at 20 years old to the testosterone levels of a 20 year old 20 years ago. And it's 20% lower. Wow. So this is a phenomenon that's happening in the world. Now you might, there's a variety of things that, that cause that to happen. We'll discuss those things. I'm one of the only people in the world to figure it out how you use behavioral skills mm -hmm. and emotional intelligence mm -hmm. to keep your testosterone always growing. Now I'm 70 years old. My testosterone levels are, are 50% higher than when I was a young man. Wow. And you know, my body has more muscle mass than it's ever had. Uh, wow. My motivation is more, my happiness is more, my sex is out of this world. It's, it's just out of this you world. Attribute that too. for how yeah. have you been able to do that? Okay. So there's dietary diet, diet, mm -hmm. moderate exercise, mm -hmm. uh, too much exercise becomes an addiction. No addictions in my life, except for me, graham crackers. So it's a pretty moderate addiction, but I am addicted to it. I can't even okay. put it in the house. Okay. If it's in the house, I'll eat a whole box. And so, and, and when my belly gets flat, which is a sign your testosterone levels are growing rather than estrogen. Estrogen, you see these guys my age and their bellies are fatter. Okay. All that fat produces estrogen. Wow. And estrogen lowers testosterone. So you've got to get rid of the belly and you got to look at the things that cause the belly. If you want, if you want testosterone. Yeah, you know, see, you, sure. you look at these, what well, you could take testosterone and then your balls will shrink and you never be able to make it again. And you'll be dependent on testosterone. And at a certain point it all, it stops working and your muscles turn to fat. So they that's a question fat. about this. There is so much of that happening. I know there are men who are getting those injections of testosterone from yeah. their doctors. And I've always been kind of concerned that they could overdo it because it seems like they, it becomes a bit of an addiction to them. So what I'm hearing from you is it's not a long-term solution. 
from my belief, yeah. Uh, so they, they, the, and particularly when you've got a natural way to do it, which is we're going to talk all about the natural ways to do it. But yeah. the, when you take testosterone, your balls begin to shrink. That's biology. Yep. If you don't have, if you don't make, if you take it, you stop making it. See, that's the whole key. If you take it, you stop making it. Yeah. And you know, life is not just about making money. It's about being happy and fulfilled. And you see, and that's what's missing today. We have this entitled, you know, all these woke people, easy lives. And so once it's easy, you have no strength, no self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Self-esteem comes from earning. Yeah. Okay. Self-esteem comes to look what I can do. It also right. comes from look who I am. Okay. Both those things. But for man, particularly, you need to feel that I can earn it. I can do it. So yeah. for some guys, you're young traders. This is not the time to get married. Wait till you feel very confident that you've done it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a, or at least biologically till you're 28, 29 years old. So nothing wrong with you if you're waiting longer to get married. Right. What you need to do now is the stage of life. And in my book, How to Get What You Want, I talk about the stages of life. And from, you know, since you say there's a lot of young traders here, your major thing is self-mastery. Mm -hmm. And when you can master yourself, then you'll be ready for an amazing relationship mm -hmm. because you're not going to be weak. Mm -hmm. You see, weak is reactive. That means when somebody says something, you get upset about it. So let's talk about this. This is so interesting for men to understand. We all know testosterone, estrogen. Women need, this is simple, Google search it, it's very clear. People say, where's the science? <laughs> just Google it, it's all right there. It's just nobody's ever talked about, never said before how your relationship skills can boost your testosterone for a lifetime, enrich your sex life for a woman. Her, how, what a man can do for a woman can raise her happiness and without a man, she's not happy. And what you'll see is a lot of women are not, without a man in their life, they're not happy. This is so many women, and I won't say every woman because I can't. All I know is that I've been doing this 50 years, and when women don't feel loved and supported by a man, they're not happy. And those are the people who come to me. And what we see in terms of numbers, we see that twice as many people than 20 years ago are single. Wow. Twice as many people. This is a huge number of relationship failures because you don't get married. You don't get in a relationship because you don't feel like they're the one. Yep. It's an amazing experience to have the confidence within yourself that no matter what, you're with the, you're with the one. Yep. You know, that's deep love. That's commitment. Yep. And that comes about when you can be strong on your masculine side. You know, so we'll talk about that. So the unhappiness today for women, if we look at it as a broad scale, there's always exceptions to everything. There's a bell sure. curve, right? Sure. Well, we see for men, this low testosterone phenomena. Well, first of all, we, we already discussed testosterone is so low for men and it keeps getting lower. Yes. So if you have a young guy, 21 years old, his testosterone levels are 20% lower than just 20 years ago. And every year it's going down another percent, another percent, another percent. It used to be men's testosterone went up to 35 and then started to go down 1%, 1%. Wow. But it doesn't have to go down. See, yep. nobody, you see, when you can stay turned on to your partner, see, anybody can be turned on in the beginning of a relationship because there's newness. Newness yeah. stimulates dopamine. And in males, dopamine stimulates testosterone. For mm -hmm. women, dopamine, uh, dopamine will stimulate estrogen. For a woman to have a sexual climax, for example, or to desire sex and then be fulfilled through sex, she needs to have twice as much estrogen as her normal level, twice as much. Now, every, what's her normal level? Her normal level, if she's happy, only if she's happy. And I don't find that that often when right. they come to therapy. You have to remember, yeah. a lot of people look happy, but when they come to a therapist, you find out they're not. All right. Nope. And I don't judge them for that because I've nope. seen so many. And I mean, you have to keep coming back to some of these great people, you know, big money makers. Their wives are not happy. And you better believe if you're coming home to an unhappy woman, you're not happy. Yeah. So what do women say? I give and give in relationships and I don't get back. And a man comes home and says, nothing I can do can make her happy because he doesn't know what to do yeah. to help make her happy. Yeah. And as a 20 year old in your twenties, a woman's happiness should not be the most important thing for you. Mm -hmm. It becomes more important as you get into your thirties. That's the level of maturity. First yes. thing you need before you can depend on a woman is first depend on yourself. If you can depend on yourself to be happy based upon, look at my accomplishments, look at my achievements, look what I've done, look what I can do. That confidence raises testosterone. So 
men need typically uh, it's a, a range, a bigger range between men is dependent on shoulder size. The wider your shoulders, your set point for feel good testosterone is different. Okay. All right. So if you, you know, when I'm in Europe, I go to some of these countries and the guy's shoulders are like blocks, you know, I mean, they're yes. huge. And so they have to do, they're naturally drawn to dangerous jobs. They're naturally drawn to difficult jobs. They're naturally drawn to the military. They're naturally drawn to the police. They're in situations where they're willing to sacrifice themselves. See, sacrifice for a noble cause, sacrifice to make money, sacrifice without complaining, increases testosterone. That's it. This is what men have always done. This is how men kept their testosterone up their whole lives. They don't go down. Any man who has a, a elevated cortisol in your body, and what happens when you have consistent adrenaline, you have dopamine, which you feel really good doing something. And then if there's danger, like driving fast or <laughs> volatile yeah. stocks, okay. Right. And even more than that, people you care about who are dependent upon your decisions. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I, I, I recommended a stock to some of my friends. I said, I know it. I'm an, I'm an insider. I'm part of the company. I know, <laughs> I know the guy, okay, I know what's happening. Yep. Told my friends, they lost money and I paid them all that they lost. Otherwise I couldn't sleep at night. I mean, I can't even imagine investing other people's money unless you're an expert and that's your job. So I get yep. that. Yep. So these are huge sources of stress, you know, back in some of the crashes, people were jumping out of buildings and whatever marriages were breaking up because if you feel self doubt, okay, what's going to happen is your testosterone goes down. When you have confidence, your testosterone goes up. Men, as an average between 10 and 20 times he needs to make in his body every day, he needs to make 10 to 20 times more testosterone than a woman. That's, mm -hmm. Think about somebody who's 10 times bigger than you. I mean, that's giant. Okay. Yes. So then you yes. kind of go, okay, we have a fuel that keeps us feeling good. And women have a fuel that keeps them feeling good. They need, they're more consistent in this part of it. They need 10 times, at least 10 times more estrogen than a happy man. Mm. Now, so what then makes testosterone estrogen? Well, so many women today have period problems, mood swings, antidepressants, yeah. one out of two women taking sleeping pills, can't sleep at night, they can't turn off their brains. Yes. You see, when you're a problem solver, and men are problem solvers, not that women can't solve problems, right. Right. Okay? but when they're solving problems, they're making testosterone, mm. and if they're if they're solving problems and they don't feel pressured and they feel safe and they feel at ease, then they're making estrogen and testosterone, which is one of the most fulfilling things a person can experience is when you're balanced with your testosterone production and your estrogen production. They do these massive studies on testosterone in males. On average, the men with the highest testosterone are single. As soon as they go into a committed relationship with a woman, their testosterone levels drop. Wow. Because they have love in their life. See, love is estrogen. You can't feel love without estrogen levels going up. You can't feel anger without estrogen levels going up. All emotions mm. are estrogen production. And whenever a man is angry, his testosterone is low and his estrogen is too high. Yes, you say that in the book. It's shocking, yeah, it's a shocking shock. thing. Shocking. Everybody thinks that, oh, you know, too much testosterone causes aggression and we should have lower testosterone. No, always aggression happens when you feel powerless. So you have to revert, revert, you have to, revert to something you don't want to do. You go yeah. back to primitive conditioning, which says if you're in danger, kill somebody rather than talk to somebody. Yeah. So, so anger, so ang uh, just to underline yeah. that, maybe you're just going to do it. We think of anger as being this masculine thing and you're too much testosterone. No, no, that's low testosterone and high estrogen. And so, and I know you want to say something, Kim, let me just finish yes, that other point. Sure. So the man with the single men, not in loving relationships have the highest testosterone. Matter of fact, any man who's a sociopath has the highest testosterone. Wow. Not that every high testosterone man is a sociopath, right? but Basically, we get lots of examples of that in presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, his, there's Harvard books written on how almost every president is, is not either a psychopath or a sociopath, incapable of feeling empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and they learn how to look like they are, but they're not. And this is not me talking. I don't know all the presidents. And right, of course. <laughs> uh, in my generation, they all, they all look, <laughs> they're all liars. So that's enough to be a sociopath. Uh, pay all my own experiences talking to them. But having said that, we'll come back to yeah. the, the single guys have the highest testosterone. Getting in a committed relationship, it takes a notch down. Now remember, maybe I haven't said it yet. If a man's testosterone goes down, his stress level goes up. Mm, if he takes testosterone, it doesn't lower his stress level. If he makes testosterone, his stress level goes down. Wow. I'll say that again. Okay, so if a man is making testosterone, right now I'm cooking with my testosterone. I'm also cooking with my estrogen. Yeah. I'm having a good time. I'm relaxed. I'm not worried. <laughs> I, I enjoy this. Right? So anything, anytime you do something that you enjoy, I like this, this is fun, no stress, that's your estrogen production. Anytime you feel you're making a difference, you're doing something, you're good at it, you're smart, or you get an indicator that you're good at something. That's like audience applauding for me. It's, yeah. it's uh, Lucas over there smiling. It's yeah. Kim smiling, yeah. nodding her head. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's just fuel to me. You see, that, that's <laughs> pumping my testosterone up. We yes. men need messages. If the women were listening, I'd be saying to them, look, anytime a man talks, make sure you say these phrases. Good idea. Makes sense. Oh, you're right about that. Oh, that's so helpful. Pumps in a guy up. Unfortunately, if you're a trader, <laughs> the only time you get those bumps of testosterone is when your stock goes up. <laughs> when it goes down, fuck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your, exactly. It drops down. And then... So everything, your mood and your ability to regulate stress in your body if you're a man is you have to maintain testosterone levels higher than estrogen levels. Testosterone levels higher than estrogen levels. Anytime you have an addiction, which is again the downfall of males today, is, and I was about to say the major reason is we have low testosterone at 20 years old. We can't blame that on our relationships with women. We can certainly blame it on a relationship with our parents without a doubt, but it's also the culture and the culture. Basically for me, what I felt as a teenager, I remember the moment I went, Oh my God, if I, I'm going to get married one day, cause that's what you did, right? You got yeah, married. Absolutely. I'm going to have to support some woman. That means I'm going to have to work <laughs> really hard. <laughs> that's a, that's a pressure. See, it's a pressure. I've got to work. And that pressure is what produces testosterone. It doesn't, it becomes adrenaline sometimes, but then it, you calm down, you burn off the adrenaline. But if you stay chronically in the adrenaline state, now you're gonna produce cortisol. And cortisol is deadly to your health. And cortisol inhibits your hormone production in your body. Yes. And that's why you get this big, huge decrease is you can't make hormones if your body is, is you get what's called adrenal burnout. You're not gonna be making your testosterone. This is what you need in relationships. And this is what you need in your 20s, a young man, is to have a job where he has enough support of mentors. Mentorship is highly important. So you feel somebody knows more than me. It's yes. very, very important for that time of, of mastery, self-mastery through um, uh, duplicating an expert. Now, let me explain that. See, we have what's called a bachelor's degree. And I don't think you have to go to college, but, but yeah. in college, the idea is a bachelor's degree is you learn the basics. And then you specialize into something that makes you feel good doing. You know, you feel, I got a knack for this. I'm going to do this. Right. Then you have a mentor. Now that mentor needs to know more than you. Yeah. To gain mastery, what you actually gain mastery of is what somebody who's very successful can do. Yeah. So that's the mastery stage. And that's, our, that's for the 20-year-olds. Then, <laughs> then you've got the whole relationship thing. You, you need an expert there, particularly because all the rules have changed. Totally. And, 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 and that... that Ma mastery then turns into and can happen in your 20s as well a phd program that's where you have your own creative solutions for things right. but the support you need in the 20s particularly is mentorship you need to have somebody who knows better than you about something so you feel it's not all up to you that's too much pressure yep, and, yep. and that pressure produces adrenaline adrenaline feels really good but it taxes your body. And if you don't break the adrenaline flow, then it turns into cortisol and cortisol stays longer. Cortisol inhibits testosterone production and inhibits estrogen production in women. 
So this is what we have. We have a lot of women when they go through menopause today, you can see how these things happen. Men have this big drop in testosterone starting at 35 uh, historically. That, I mean, if we take the averages of our country. And right. by the way, I never finished the other point, which is you're dating a woman, your testosterone goes down. You commit to her, it goes down another notch. This is men in monogamous relationships, their testosterone drops down even more. And then you get married, it drops down even more. And then the men with the lowest testosterone are the men with children. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't have to be that way. I've got three daughters, four grandchildren. I've got... Uh, every good quality of, of healthy young testosterone as well as I measure it. I don't take it. Now there was a time where I started, it was going, it wasn't getting more over time. I test this stuff. Yeah. So I started taking some herbs to kick it back into gear. And then I had to practice more mastery to keep it up. Self mastery keeps it up. Yeah. So and here's an example of, oh, go ahead, Kim, you yeah. wanted to interrupt so many times well, that I apologize. That's okay. That. That's okay. I just, you know, for, for men who are potentially, who've gotten married or have children, I, I, I think first of all, and even the concept of estrogen and healthy amounts, maybe just give us the basics around because, because I don't know that men realize that they probably do need estrogen, uh, created in their bodies and that you spoke no, they to need that. testosterone they don't men today all have too much estrogen it's, it's a given okay you know? okay here's good some, That's... here's symptoms of too much estrogen in a man tell us okay. tell us anger depression passivity lack of motivation lack of desire uh reactivity and 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 staying stuck doing things that are not useful to you that's mm -hmm. called addiction okay Symptoms of high estrogen are addiction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny when I, when I, I just have to, it's funny to say this. I keep saying traitor. And of course, what I hear in my brain is a traitor, right. <laughs> you know, like somebody who, who betrays you, you're a traitor. Right. Well, right. Actually, this is the common experience of women who are married to traitors. <laughs> you started out giving me so much attention and that you're so interested in me. And now what I'm, when I'm talking to you, you're, you're just off somewhere else. Of course, you're worried about that trade, what's going to happen. And, and you get up in the morning more excited than to give me a hug or make love to me. <laughs> you want to look at the stock market. Absolutely. So that there becomes pictures, your lover. <laughs> there, there are pictures on Twitter where they have, you know, a, a man and a woman both looking at their devices, supposedly talking to each other. And the man says something about how, you know, beautiful something looks. And she thinks it's hard, but he's looking at his, you know, his P and L. That's right. So. That's right. <laughs> and there's no question about it. It's like what I said, you know, men read relationship books, they're in the business, they're in the stock market books, you know, because right. he knows if I make money, my testosterone goes up. And we all know that if, if you're, if you're successful, women are attracted to you. It's, yes. you know, beauty, unfortunately, women seem to deny this, but they're the beauty of being happy. It can be physical beauty. It can be being happy. It can be a smile on your face. It can be love in your heart. It can be generosity. It can be forgiveness. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like letting go of things in the past, starting over. That's beauty. That's femininity. That's your power. That's the power of love. And the power of love is what makes men fall in love with you, kneel before you and say, will you marry me? Yeah. See, this is what women have to get is, is that it's who being yourself as a loving person, a happy person, because that's who you are. All this other stuff is not who you are. It's programmed in from your childhood. That's why, you know, you have to learn to reprogram yourself. Particularly the big challenge today is women, because I believe in the soul's growth and that, you know, for me, my greatest happiness is balancing my masculine and feminine. Okay. I'm a, I have self-mastery. I achieve my goals. I keep my word about important things, not always little things. Right. And I have, I'm not perfect in any way, but the things that count, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I have my testosterone up and I take the time to enjoy myself in ways that are not destructive to my commitments. Yes. Okay, so, and basically what that looks like is I just watched, a, I was just disgusted when there was a, another one of these woke teachers teaching children you know, they're teaching all about their sexual identity in kindergarten and they're teaching them how good masturbation is. This is all children should know masturbation is a good thing. It's a good thing. The reason we've gone overboard saying masturbation is a good thing is because people used to get addicted to it. It's massively addictive for children. 
massively addictive. It shouldn't even be talked about. And if you talk to it, it should be the parent. It should be done in a way which says, oh, this is really good for you. It's not good for you. It lowers your testosterone. Talk more about that, yeah, especially the most important thing. What, what we what? know now is how porn is so accessible to everybody without any kind of, uh, you know, issue. And that too, I, I know, you know, is, is affecting men, especially if, it, ironically, I unexpectedly was in a mall this past week and on a different island. And these two young men were trying to talk to people and interview uh, because he was like, I think porn is really screwing up my generation. He was in his 20s, 30s. It is. And it has. It has. It is the number one reason testosterone levels are so low in men. I predicted it in the 90s. I remember my cameramen, all these young guys, you know, and I'm talking yeah. about you know, what porn will do to you is that you will no longer be able to stay attracted to a real woman. Okay, so that's how it shows up. It feels good. It feels great. I mean, there's nothing better. <laughs> it's like taking cocaine. It is cocaine on your brain. It okay. is saying to you, this young guy who's trying to make it in the world and feel like I'm great. And as soon as you go online and you've got 64,000 women all saying, hey, I've undressed for you and I'll have sex with you. It affects your pre- the, the, the unconscious part of your brain, which is the, the sex center in the brain, which is totally unconscious, completely unconscious, just like digestion's unconscious. Right. So arousal occurs instantly and the arousal occurs because there's a surge of testosterone, a surge of dopamine, which is the result of getting the message that 64,000 women all think you're the best guy in the world. You can say, oh, they don't care about me. They're all just lying and they, they're just doing it for the money. Most of them hate yeah. you. You can tell you that. You can know that. You'll still, the primitive brain doesn't know that because we are monkeys. Most of our brain is monkey. And if you're the top monkey, the alpha monkey, the females flock to you. Yep. So if the females aren't flocking to you, then you're not the alpha. And so if you can appear, oh, here's a stranger, newness stimulates unusually high levels of dopamine, naked bodies fresh skin, fresh skin <laughs> stimulates testosterone. Yep. Having sex with your girlfriend can never ever produce as much testosterone as porn, period. Yeah. And, and you know, I, you know, I, I, I look to see all the research and everything and right. oh, the porn industry is the foundation of the internet. It's a massive amount of money. And of course they have all their little trolls in there talking about how masturbation does not lower your testosterone. You have to hunt to find the actual studies wow. and, and it doesn't in, in a certain sense, because what they're doing is you masturbate and test your testosterone, test your testosterone before, test it after it doesn't change. Well, when I make love, my testosterone goes super high and it comes down to the baseline of 50% higher than I was when a young man, 50% higher, Superman. That's what I am as far as I feel. Right. <laughs> Particularly, right. you know, uh, an art that you can learn men, it, uh, we can get to is learning how not to ejaculate when you have sex. Yeah. Now, when you can do that, then you can have sex all the time and your testosterone doesn't go down. It stays 50% higher. That's my baseline is 50% higher. Right. Because the Japanese did the study. Here's the study. If you're, and this is for young men, a little different as you get older, mm -hmm. but a young man, he, ha he ejaculates or he has sex, either one. Afterwards, his testosterone will go down to what's called baseline. So mm -hmm. he didn't lower his testosterone that way. But if he waits six days before ejaculating again, this is the magic number for a 20, 20 year old in the 20s, six or seven days, but the study was done with athletes, test their testosterone and performance. Your athletic performance dramatically increases. Wow. Uh, that's why I can press almost twice as much as I could when I was a young guy. Wow. <laughs> and I mean, I was, feel my, my thighs are like massive, you know, and it's not that's from a lot of exercise. It's just having a lot of testosterone and doing squats. Not that many. <laughs> right. You don't have to overdo it to get your muscles. Right. If you have testosterone, it builds muscles. That's why if you take te testosterone, that's called steroids, your muscles will get really big. And then if you take too much, then you get man boobs. That's estrogen. That's because when testosterone goes too high, it converts into estrogen. Which is the danger of potentially taking the testosterone supplement yes. with the shots. And it's already a danger. It inhibits, it inhibits your aging process. If you take it, you're now 
the balls that make you make testosterone as a man through your testicles and your testicles literally start to atrophy. Wow. You're not, if you need testosterone to take it is only going to weaken you more because what makes estrogen is when you feel dependent on something other than yourself. You can't maintain your testosterone unless you're making it. You yeah. know, I'll, I'll feel great after doing this interview. Right. Why? Because I feel that I can do something constructive. I've got amazing ideas that help people. I mean, it's a tremendous power. You know, I talk to people, I counsel people in, in weeks, their relationships are transformed. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so expensive that when they come to me, they've already been to all the world's famous experts. Totally. totally. And every time I say, and what did he tell you to do? What'd she tell you to do? I did that. I did. Well, that's completely wrong. That's completely wrong. <laughs> it's just first step. If you want to get out of this adrenaline trap and out of this uh, co chronic stress level right. and low testosterone level, because whenever you're producing adrenaline, you're draining your body of testosterone. And when you uh, have it all the time and you're not breaking it up, some adrenaline is fine, no problem, as long as you balance it with non-adrenaline stimulating activities. Then you can burn up your adrenaline but if you don't burn it up, you go into the cortisol state. And once you're in cortisol state, your body stops getting the signal to make testosterone. You just burn out. Yeah. You burn out. Yeah. And, and so for and those who might be constantly in that adrenaline uh, state, what are some things that they could do to mitigate it? If they, they are a full-time trader, that is how they make their living, yeah. especially like what are the things they could do to manage that adrenaline Trading is going to produce super high adrenaline levels, high dopamine levels, and it desensitizes the dopamine receptor sites and creates ADD. Okay, that's what ADD is, is the inability to focus on something that's not so interesting. Mm. Okay, you take a kid who can't focus in classroom, put him in yeah. front of a video game, which produces adrenaline, and he'll focus completely. So it's not the inability to focus, it's to be able to choose where you focus. Yes. So if you're a trader, and I did this earlier, to be able to be present and relax when a woman is talking, <laughs> it's practically impossible. Your brain keeps going back to, what should I do about this? I'm still worried about that. I got to do this done. You have to, over time, you can retrain your brain by opening up the receptor sites that are closed down. What happens is they, you train your brain so I can only be excited unless I have cocaine levels of dopamine. If I have normal levels of dopamine, it's boring. I feel flat. I feel disinterested. I feel tired. I was just counseling a man and his wife, you know, he, he can't even listen to her at all. Anytime she starts to talk, he feels tired. <laughs> he goes into a slump because <laughs> right. it's just not enough stimulation. He needs to always be working on his work. He's fixated, thinking about it all the time, all the time. That's an addiction. The, the, the adrenaline becomes an addiction. It will become addictive over time. And what, and what would you suggest to someone if they, if they recognize that they might be addicted to that? They are. All traders are addicted to work. There's no question about it. Their brain can't stop. I can't say all. There could be a few exceptions. Yeah. But the nature of the job, it's right. like a, a, a fireman. The fireman goes to the fire. Massive production of dopamine desensitizes the dopamine receptors. And then they come back to the fire room and all they do is pornography and drugs. I won't say everyone because you can't say everyone because he's got to go home to his wife sometimes. They, I'm not like those guys, <laughs> but that's true. They're, yeah. they're sex addicts, uh, they're pornography addicts, they're drug addicts, there's alcohol addicts. And it's not like they're bad people. It's just that they feel dead. They had yeah. such aliveness and then they feel flat. They're dead. Those receptor sites over time begin to go down and that's the symptom of ADD. And for me, it was like nine years of that superstardom when I was everywhere at all times, massive, you know, every week a football people, imagine a football, a, a Olympic fo uh, stadium of people <laughs> all reading my book and then telling awesome. somebody else to read my book. It was massive. Yeah. Yeah. So that was such a rush for me, such a complete rush. And then it overstimulated my brain. And then that gave me Parkinson's. Parkinson's is just an extension of ADD. The, the inhibited function of dopamine. So I learned, how do you cure that? You cure that, one, by you have to break the addiction. You, have to, you can't just keep doing it. There's certain things, you don't stop trading. So you, any other addictions you try to minimize. And you balance the work time with relaxation time, which is non-stressful. You've got to take time to go into situations that don't produce a lot of dopamine and endure it. 
Yep. Now, what can help it to endure it so that it's just not like you, you know, you've got to just sit there and, and find a hobby. It's like find a hobby. Uh, children are great because you can go take children and kick the ball back and forth and whatever. For many okay. fathers, it's just boring. But you have to do boring things that can be helpful to others. Okay, that's how you desensitize the receptor site. So if you take an average kid today, take him into the woods for a weekend, or he's addicted to his phone, addicted to, you know, social yep. media. All you do is take them three days into nature and have them do activities in nature and they won't miss that phone at all. The yep. brain adapts, but you have to go from high stimulation to low stimulation. And in between, it's going to be some grumbling. I don't want to do this. This is boring. This is flat. Nothing. And then they get into it. And yep. for all of us, we need to take cave time to balance the high adrenaline. So cave time is anything you're good at that you can be good at that doesn't produce immediate gratification. Okay. Totally. So it's like, we have to learn how to do things that just don't make you happy all the time. Even though you, right. you may not be happy all the time while you're trading, you're pumping all this adrenaline. Yeah. You're totally. getting excited when it goes up and you're getting excited when it goes down. And what that does is it, in, if you, if you have a lot of emotion with it, and I'm sorry we didn't get to that, Kim, but you're talking about when you guys, help people with emotional intelligence. Another sure. technique you do that will, that will reset your dopamine receptors is emotional intelligence, which means if you get upset about something, you write out mm. what you're upset about. You write it out. You could also talk to a coach as well, but you also have to do it alone. You have to, if you're a man, you have to do it alone. You can share it with a coach, but they can't do everything for you. You have to be more independent. And then you do your assignment. You write out what you're angry about. You anger it right at what your disappointment is and let yourself feel sad and let you know what your fears are and exaggerate all of it. Exaggerate it, exaggerate, exaggerate because we're all masters now suppressing emotion. So you write it out, write it out, write it out. The, the, my key formula for this, I'll just quickly do it, is yeah. frustration and anger, then shift gears into disappointment and sadness, then shift gears into fear and concern. Just whatever is going on inside, you're looking inside yourself articulating that's all it takes for your brain to adjust and your brain to adapt back to normal dopamine function and back to being happy and fulfilled so you it's stress management you every time there's a stress there's always some anger with it there's some our frustration there's always some sadness and disappointment there's always some fear and concern and there's always regret mm -hmm. always you feel you just articulate i should have done this i feel bad i didn't do that and you exaggerate exaggerate i feel ashamed i shouldn't have done this it's like when i gave all that advice to my friends i just i felt ashamed oh my god who did i think i was to give that advice to them see i have no shame around the advice i give today this is 50 years in the making i don't even doing trading for a year i thought i knew it i didn't okay so uh then so you you write out those four basic emotions then you just shift gears and you shift gears by, you, you can do basically, what is my most negative thought right now? That's a pain point. What is my pain point, which is my most negative thought now? And just ask yourself, what's my most negative thought? I'm all alone. I blew it. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'll never be successful. How can anybody, tr nobody trust me, will ever trust me again. I, what's your pain point? Because see, it's only our belief that causes the stress mm -hmm. that I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. So. You get your pain point, just write it out. And then having acknowledged that shift gears again to what I want, what I want, what I want, what I want, what I want. Just start writing out everything you want or wish, wish, want, 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 want. After you do that for maybe just a few minutes, yeah. then for positive emotions. Mm -hmm. So we looked at for negative emotions, what you yep. want, then what for positive emotions. You have to willfully shift gears and you go to what I'm grateful for. Write out what you're grateful for, at least three or four things. Then what, what makes me happy? I'm happy that I'm happy because I'm happy. I get to, okay. Yep. What you're happy about and what you're, um, what you're hopeful for. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that I can do this and I'll be able to do this and I'll be able to do this and this will happen. If you can't feel hope, there's another phrase you can use, which is right now in my life, I'm in the process of, mm -hmm. and then you're just looking at every good thing you want to happen. Okay. You already looked at what you want. Now just be hopeful. It's going to happen. And then the fourth positive emotion is I'm so proud of myself. So you go from feeling down on yourself yes. to feeling proud of yourself. And it's always there. If you go in that order or somewhere near that order and explore what's inside on paper, you yep. don't have to share it with anybody. Yep. You can share it with your coach, but you're doing this. You're being, see, what produces testosterone is independence. 
Mm. What produces estrogen is negative emotion. So you're embracing the, the reality. You, you can't feel stress if you're a man, if your estrogen levels are low. You're always estrogen levels are too high if you're stressed and your testosterone is too low. Yep. And for and men, so if you're getting resentment from a woman, it's you just don't know what you're doing wrong. And that's where you can read this book. But all we looked at today, which is so valuable, is testosterone, two of your biggest obstacles. Oh, drinking out of plastic bottles and pesticides, just to know. Oh. Those are major called hormone disruptors. Wow. They inhibit estrogen production in women and they inhibit testosterone production in men. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I explain all that in great detail, why that same thing, GMO chemicals actually inhibit hormonal production. They're called hormone disruptors. This is pure science. Yep. And then you've got another hormone disruptor is plastic, drinking yep. water from plastic bottles, another major hormone disruptor. So you have the lowest testosterone levels in countries where <laughs> they use plastic. <laughs> it really makes total sense. See, the estrogen gets produced to balance your testosterone and have it go together is through touch, through caring, through actual physical stimulation, through foreplay, through building a woman's pleasure up. And one of the keys to be able to master sex is to realize that <clears throat> the more you want it, men, the less she wants it. Mm. The more you're, you can wait, you're at ease, you're passionate when the moment comes where her estrogen goes really high but you're not rushing for it. You're kind of like a guy ready to get on it, to jump, do the whole thing and get on your horse and ride away. That just shuts a woman down. Her fire needs to grow by you settling yours down. So mm -hmm. it's a balancing of the energies. Men are hot and they want to go fast. Women are cold and they need to warm up as you slow down. So it's, it's a balancing of the energies as well. That's all in my book, Mars and Venus in the Bedroom. Another one of my online class has a lot of that information called Secrets That's of Great awesome. Sex. And That's for awesome. women, how to increase your estrogen. If you've got a girlfriend, buy it for her. Uh, it's my daughter teaching that class called How Do You Get Your Me Time? Meaning, how do you produce estrogen without depending on a man? So your job is never to make her happy. Your job is to make her happier. Mm -hmm. And that, by the way, is another psychological tip to testosterone. Because testosterone goes down when you feel a failure. And if you think you're responsible for her happiness, you're always going to get beat up. Mm -hmm. See, what I know is my job as a husband is not to make it worse and not to make her happy. My job is to make her happier, mm -hmm. happier. If she's in a bad mood. My job is not, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's very clear. And it's a hard thing to be, man. We get reactive. We get all bent out of shape when women aren't happy and they're not satisfied. No, well, no woman can ever be satisfied all the time. They're like the weather. They're like a wave. It goes up and down. And when it goes down, you can't get beat out of shape about that. You got to go, okay, I'll just not make it worse for her. And that's where you learn my skills, like letting her talk, but not trying to fix anything. Uh, don't do anything big. Try to convince her to be happy. Don't tell her she should be happy. Don't make her wrong. See, all we do is just make it worse, thinking we're going to make it better. And then the whole pressure on making her happy. I, I don't have to make her happy. She's not happy all the time. Nobody is. So it's kind of like expect the weather be perfect all the time. I just don't take it personally because I know my job is to make her happier, not to make her happy. You see, right. it's such a relief. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to you, John. That's right. That's just a magic word. I could never <laughs> I not. I got it. You're right. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much, Kim. Thank thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks, so much, John. John. Pleasure it's amazing to have you. Really, I'm so uh, excited to share this with you know traders that I feel are going to learn so much from you. So thank you for coming today and for sharing all your wisdom with us and for all the books and the contribution you are to us. Thank you so much. Okay. I, I forgot one other thing. Yeah. To burn off adrenaline. Yeah. You have to do physical activity. Mm -hmm. So before you do your boring activity, you got to do some boring exercise. Uh, you, you, that literally physiologically, once adrenaline is produced, it doesn't go anywhere unless you burn it off physically. Now, women don't have to burn it off physically. They, they burn it off through talking about their feelings, having their estrogen go up. But and, uh, you know, if you're doing that process I taught you, you're burning off some adrenaline there. But if yeah. you're not wanting to do that, you, two things, emotions to raise estrogen will burn off es adrenaline or come back to using your physical body, your muscles in order to burn off the adrenaline. Because if you look at the historic, just for fun, the logic of that, is you're in danger, that's adrenaline. And so now if you run, 
and you are you're using your muscles then your brain gets the message that okay you're not in so much danger because you were able to run away right so, totally so that's the thing you've got to use your body just physically using your body will convert the adrenaline back into dopamine and you'll feel really good which is the runner's high so would that be good for a trader to do then prior to their trading day or at the end of their trading day? Well, it's a, if you're stressed out in the morning, I, you know, I listen to Joe Rogan a lot and there's, you know, he got some of these big muscle guys, fighters and whatever. Yeah. These guys are about self mastery. Okay. Yeah. They may not have relationship skills. Joe does, but uh, you know, they're self mastery, you know, they have yeah. discipline and I was listening to one of them. And that's been good for men to listen to that stuff too. Remember what it is to be a man, kill animals and do that stuff, you know, eat them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vegetarian diet is not going to make it for your testosterone unless you really exercise your body and whatever. And too much exercise, your body just means aging, by the way, everything in moderation, moderation, moderation. So the, but I had the point on, on, Oh, should it be morning or not morning. One of these guys, who masters his muscles and that side of testosterone. He says, I, every morning I get up at four o'clock and I do my five hour, I do my one hour <laughs> run or whatever it is. And I don't want to do it. And it's brutal. And I get out there and I do it. And when I'm done, I've conquered the day. Yeah. See, I conquered the day. Uh, yeah. It's and cause he did something he didn't like doing. Yep. <laughs> See, that's the thing, man. That's what a real man does. You do what has to be done. And for these big guys, see, they got big shoulders. They got to use those muscles to burn off the adrenaline. If you have less broad shoulders, you don't have to use your muscles as much. You can also do the subjective work. Self-analysis right. is also testosterone producing, as well as when I'm describing that emotional technique, you're actually analyzing your female side. You're analyzing your estrogen, your emotions. That's also very masculine. But once again, when you're in therapy with somebody, it's different. You're analyzing, you're looking at your feelings to go inside to discover your belief system, your thoughts that are causing all this to then solve the problem and letting it go. Anything which is solving a problem is going to be producing testosterone. That's fair. Right, I just wanted to throw that in because it good. it's good. It's a great, it's a great way to end it. So I'm glad you spoke to that too. Thank you, John, so much again for coming on this podcast. And everybody, thank you for watching the Wall Street Coach podcast. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Aloha for now. This is the Wall Street Coach podcast with Kim Ann Curtin. You can download Kim's free ebook, Discipline and Finding Your Edge, at traderdiscipline.com. And learn more about working with Kim and her team at thewallstreetcoach.com. And if you're feeling generous, please leave a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening.